experience in our life. You speak to us profoundly in silence. And you speak to us in the word of God that will now be proclaimed. I pray that we all listen attentively to this word. We pray this Christ in your name. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the re destruction of the living. For he fashioned all things that they might have being, and the creatures of the world are wholesome, and there is not a destructive drug among them, <coughs> nor any domain of the netherworld on earth, for justice is undying. For God formed man to be imperishable, the image of his own nature he made him. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord. For you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord. For you drew me clear. And did not let my enemy. Rejoice over me, O oh Lord, you brought me up from the nether world, you preserved me from among those going down to the peak, I will praise you. For you have rescued me, I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praise to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger lasts but for a moment, a lifetime he's goodwill, a night for weeping enters, but with the dawn rejoicing, I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I Have pity upon me, O oh Lord, my helper. You change my mourning into dancing, O oh Lord, my God, forever I will give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will. From the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect, in faith, 
discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in love we have for you. May you excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for our sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs so that their abundance may also supply yours, your needs. That there may be equality. As it is written, whoever had much did not have more, and whoever had little did not have less. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors, and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately, her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to Jesus, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? 
disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kuun, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, the child of 12, arose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. My sisters and brothers in Christ, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Friends, just about a month ago, a young gentleman came to see me to share um, his life story, even though he shared bits and pieces of it beforehand. Um, he told me he was raised up in the, in the faith. Um, his parents apparently did not display much faith. They very seldom went to church. And so the gift of faith, the seed of faith that was planted at his baptism was just snuffed out. It was crushed. And so he, his closing lines were, I'm an atheist, I'm a non-Christian Christian, whatever that means. And then about two weeks after that, uh, this couple came in um, to buy a, a gift for their uh, grandchild. And they were there for about, in our gift store, for about 25 minutes. And I was just so impressed with them, you could tell that they were very faith-filled people. And their one son went to a university to be trained to teach religion. He was going to give much of his life and, and into that ministry. And just before they left, I said, boy, both of you must have had outstanding parents. And I was taken aback to hear, oh, they said, our parents had no faith life at all. Um, or we found no meaning in life. We were searching. There was a real void in our life. And so we read an awful lot of literature, spiritual literature, and we finally decided um, that the Catholic faith is our vocation. We have absolutely loved it. It's meant so much to us and to our family. He said, we flew in from St. Louis and our parish is the largest Catholic parish there. Um, he said, we have 6,000 families. And the neighboring parish, he said, has 5,000 Catholic families. So just so you know, most of the Catholics now are in St. Louis. <laughs> and then, my friends, uh, there's a third situation I encountered. Very often a spouse would talk to me and say, well, Father, um, I've been kind of floundering in my faith for many, many years. I got married, and I got married to this most wonderful person who was so vibrant in their faith. Um, and what happened, it was a catalyst in bringing me back to the church, and I just absolutely love my faith tradition and how it has really nourished me. And then many of us here in the pews today I think we could acknowledge that, boy, we've been so fortunate. We've been raised in the faith. Our parents were so wonderful. They were so faith-filled. Uh, they taught us how to be faith-filled. We've never strayed as far as leaving our faith. It's really nourished us and nurtured us, and we celebrate that. We are so grateful. 
And then finally, in today's gospel text, we have two people, the synagogue official, Jairus, and their lady who had a hemorrhage for 12 years. It's hard to imagine. And um, both of them were cured. Well, Jairus' daughter was cured. He said, you don't even have to go visit her. I know that you have the power to heal her. And then the lady with the hemorrhage just wanted to touch his clothing because she knew she knew she would be cured. But their faith was prompted because not only of the messenger of Christ, but also because of the message. So we have all these wonderful stories of faith and those other stories that are a little disarming or disalarming. Friends, I looked it up, up the definition of faith. I should have remembered it from my catechism. It goes something like this. A faith is that supernatural virtue by which through the help of God, through the help of God and the assistance of grace, we receive grace through prayer and through the sacraments, friends. We believe what the Lord has revealed to us. I jotted down some other things that we can say about faith. First of all, it's a pure gift from God. I personally believe it's the greatest treasure that we possess. Friends, you and I can get excited about the new car, the renovation of our home, um, the summer vacation, uh, the trip to Greece. Um, this can bring a lot of joy and happiness and pleasure, and we, we can get excited and happy about this. Nothing's wrong with this. But to really realize we, we do possess the most precious gift, and that's the gift of faith. I personally believe that the gift of faith can be taken away from us. And it has been taken away from a lot of people. And one of the ways we take away this gift of faith is by living a life of serious sin. I believe also there are different stages of faith. As you know, when you're a child, you have a a certain faith level, and then as an adult, hopefully it could be mature. And I also finally believe that a deep faith is so awesome that there's a power that comes from it. Friends, the power that comes from your faith life, and sometimes we don't realize this, it's a power of incredible blessings that we receive, our family receives, our friends and other people around us. I'm reminded of that text of St. James. I love it. It's one of my favorite texts. The quote is exactly this. The faith, the faith of a good person has a powerful effect. If you and I continue to live that faith and it's vibrant and alive, the effect that that has on so many other people. Finally, friends, the essential quality of one of the deepest levels of faith to me is what I call the trust element. You can't have a real deep faith unless there's trust in the Lord. And bear with me as I tell you the story that has spoken volumes to me. It's about four mountain climbers. These mountain climbers, they negotiated with their spouse that once a month, they would have the whole day off to go mountain climbing. Um, you never go mountain climbing alone. But this one particular Saturday, the three other men opted out for some reason or another, but this guy wasn't gonna tell his wife that um, the other three couldn't go. So he decided, I'm getting out of the house and I'm going mountain climbing. He um, was successful with the first peak. He was able to climb it. Um, the second peak was quite higher and more difficult. He was doing rather well, but that at one point, unfortunately, he started slipping. He slipped about 10 feet and he was going down further. Thank God there was a bush that was growing outside of a rock. And he was able to latch onto that um, bush, I'm sorry. He was able to latch onto that bush, but he was really sweating profusely. 
He thought there could be his impending death, but he gets the bright idea of thinking there might be some other mountain climbers either above him or below him, and he starts yelling, is there anybody else up there? Is there anybody up there? No response. Is there anybody be below me? Is there anybody below me? No response. Now he thinks he's closer to death. He yells one more time, is there anybody up there? And he hears this booming voice. Yes, I'm here. Oh, he says, please, who are you? Will you save me? He said, I'm the Lord. Oh, he says, thank God. He said, I just need to be saved. Tell me whatever you want me to do, and um, I'll do it. And there's a booming voice that says, let go of the bush. Let go of the bush. There's total quiet, quiet for about 10 seconds. And then in a very squeamish voice, you hear the gentleman look up again and say, is there anybody else up there? <laughs> Friends, um, all of us are riddled um, with problems, or most of us. It could be a financial problem. It could be a health problem. It could be a conflict with our spouse, our children. There could be addiction there. There could be serious sickness. Um, I'm no Pollyanna. I'm not saying that everything is going to get better. But if you really have faith, if you really have faith like the Gospels tell us, then God gives us the strength and the energy um, to really be able to deal with any problem that we are dealt with. If you and I have that type of trust, we truly will be blessed. Amen. Amen. Now we lift up to the Lord all our needs and all our concerns. For the church, that we who are made in the image of God may celebrate God's gift of life to us and live it with gratitude and zeal, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For growth in our faith, that God will draw us into a deeper relationship, help us to trust in challenging times, and free us from fear, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of minds and hearts, that the healing touch of Jesus will restore those who have experienced abuse, discrimination, abandonment, or ridicule, we pray to the Lord. For Father Emerson and all who are traveling, that God will watch over them, protect them from harm, help them find peace, joy, and renewal of the Spirit in their stays, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of generosity, that touched by the words of Christ, God will free our hearts to share with those who are struggling so that they may experience God's blessing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and homebound, that God will renew the gift of life within them, restore them to health and wholeness, and through the Spirit give strength to continue loving, continue the loving of their caregivers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that God will bring them into the fullness of life and welcome them to the eternal banquet. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, For what else shall we pray? For all the prayers we hold so deeply in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord Please take out your cards with the prayer for the Senate on synodality. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, with you alone to guide us. Make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn of preparation can be found in our green hymnals on page 
sisters and my brothers, pray now that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Almighty God, those who are gathered here today truly believe that this bread and this wine is about to be changed into your precious body and blood. We are present for a miracle. We are present for a mystery. Lord God, you also give us a vibrant faith that will believe that the situations that we face in life with our family, our community, our broken, fragile world can also be transformed. We pray that this be realized in your name, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us now give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. <laughs> Please make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Now do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope and our Bishop, and all the clergy, the laity, the religious and civic leaders. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, please, into the light of your face, and also have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with her Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace and my, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. Christ, giving peace now, be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Peace. <laughs> Jesus, our brother and our friend, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray now. Almighty and eternal God, as you have renewed us spiritually by the Eucharist, but also by this faith community, help us to realize our vocation call for all of us is to spiritually renew others. We pray this, Christ, in your name. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I'm Deborah Drennan, better known as Susu, and um, I'm still inviting you to sign your children and grandchildren up for Vacation Bible School, which is from July 29th through August 2nd. I'm looking for volunteers, adults, to help us, um, man the little children, and of course the children. It's for grades K-5 through 5th grade and the information is in the bulletin. Thank you so much. Good morning, it's me again. Oh, you weren't gonna see me anymore, didn't you? <laughs> okay, I would like to thank the staff, all of the volunteers, everyone on program, and you for supporting us through Juneteenth. Father David Hyman. Father David Hyman started this many, many years ago, and I'm sure he would be so proud of for keeping it up. Father Louis, of course, will tell him that we're keeping it going, and we want to see you next year. Same time. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Father Louis was with us today, and he's been with us all week, and I know many of us who no Father Louie, love it when he comes here. Um, he is... You know, I, I call him friend and he's been such a pleasure to get to know through the years. And all of you can see the passion he has for our church, the passion he has for each of you. So please thank him so much from the bottom of your hearts for being with us. It's such a pleasure to be able to serve with Father Louis. So, I almost feel like a rock star. <laughs> Let us stand, please. The Lord be with you. in Mass in our green hymnals on page 498, page 498. 